Hey, what's up, Solutioneers? So I just got back from Atlanta and Green Business Circularity Conference. It was a sold-out three-day affair with more than a thousand sustainability professionals from virtually every consumer brand and reps from the rest of their value chain. Here's three takeaways that I took away from the conference. Number one, ESG has arrived and is here to stay. So environmental, social, and governance, or ESG goals, have become ubiquitous across corporate America. They're essentially ways that companies convey commitments to making a positive difference in the world, from sustainability measures to ethical standards and guidelines on how the company treats its employees, shareholders, and the communities in which they operate. 10 years ago, there were few sustainability departments in major corporations, but now they're the norm. And the chief sustainability officer is typically part of the C-suite and a key part of developing and implementing the SG goals. And whether it was from the main stage or breakouts or individual conversations, it was clear that sustainability professionals and consumer brands have bought in and are working hard to help their companies transform. A big part of this is data and metrics. It's hard for companies to know if they're making progress without baseline data and ways to quantify the impacts of intervention and strategies. Scope 3 climate emissions were a hot topic, of course, especially because for most brands, the majority of their climate emissions occur upstream and downstream of the assets they control, meaning that they can make their manufacturing plants net zero and build green office buildings, but those interventions pale in comparison to the emissions of the supply chains for their products and packaging that are much more reliant on their design choices and their suppliers and vendors. Now, the panel I participated in on how reuse can impact scope three emissions was packed and standing room only. And big brands across the spectrum uh, are now developing scope three emissions inventories and they're assessing ways to lower their emissions. Number two, brands are finally excited <laughs> to work proactively on environmental policy. Uh, there were a number of breakout sessions on policy and it was thrilling to see brands like Walmart, associations like the American Beverage Association, talk about how they were pulling out all the stops to get the Colorado EPR bill passed, which is a framework very similar to the one Upstream developed nearly 10 years ago. It's clear that the vast majority of brands now support EPR, and in side conversations I heard from a variety of stakeholders that the EPR dialogues we helped initiate with the Ocean Plastic Leadership Network and the Meridian Institute helped the companies hash out a number of unresolved issues. Deposit return systems or bottle bills were also a hot topic with packaging companies and brands in the beverage sector signaling the need for building out DRS alongside with EPR. Now we continue to advocate for bottle bills to be developed with or before EPR and not after. Finally, reuse was the word of the day. Again, whether it was the main stage or breakouts or inside conversations, brands know that more recycling or lightweighting or material substitution are not gonna be game changers and that they have to reduce packaging and build reusable packaging systems if they want to achieve their climate goals. A couple of noteworthy moments. On the main stage, Michael Karabi, the chief sustainability officer at Starbucks said that collectively humans use 500 billion disposable coffee cups each year and then held up the iconic Starbucks disposable cup and said, we got to get rid of this. Sue Shelton, the primary keynote speaker for day one and owner and principal of Shelton Group, a consumer insights firm, said their research showed that over the next five to 10 years, the idea of throwing away single-use packaging will grow increasingly uncomfortable. And now's the time for brands messaging and the systems to come full circle. It's time to get back to using it up and wearing it out. And work with your supply chain, your regulators, and even your competitors to overhaul the way we do consumption. Lastly, Ben Jordan, the Senior Director for Climate and Packaging at Coca-Cola, hosted a roundtable on Coke's experience with reusable packaging and later participated in a reusable packaging workshop that we helped organize and said, reusable packaging is among the most effective ways to reduce waste, use fewer resources, and lower our carbon footprint in support of a circular economy. One final thought here. I've been going to sustainability themed conferences for more than 20 years now. I've seen all the different trends and themes come and go from sustainable packaging is all about responsible sourcing and make sure you buy your FSC certified box board to more recycling is going to save us, but not EPR or bottle bills. We don't want to pay for it to actually wait. Lightweighting packaging is the answer to all our carbon problems to 
whoa, it looks like we might have a plastic problem from doing that, to we need a circular economy for packaging, whatever that means, to maybe we should look at EPR again, to now, which I will say is an understanding that the current linear consumption and packaging systems don't work for the planet. And nibbling around the edges of this, of this broken system with band-aid ideas isn't gonna work either. We need systems change. Part of that change is breaking the bond between consumer brands and their single-use packaging suppliers and the extraction companies upstream and waste management companies downstream. These are the leverage points for NGOs working on plastics, waste, and the circular economy. We should continue to pressure, put pressure on brands to lead, for packaging suppliers to transform, and we use services to become the norm. The landscape is different now than at any time in my 20-year career of working on these issues. Don't be surprised if the brands end up leading the way.